Welcome to World War II Online Tutorial. Taking off and landing with a JU-88. As with any unit that you are not familiar with, you need to practice offline, not within the live server. Go to Cornered Rat Software and select Practice Offline. The reason why is that all units, whether it be an, an aircraft, a ship, a person, a machine gun, those units are all created by the factories, tickets, and they apply to a specific amount of supply. Now, right now, because of the introduction of recent supply had been increased drastically. However, once they have removed that and bring it down to where the standard amount of supply should, there's going to be even less number of units available on the live server because you're going to be dying, crashing, blowing yourself up until you get used to whatever it is that you, you're using. So consequently, if you're doing this in the live server, people see that, they're going to assume that you are grieving, which means you are going in and destroying stuff on purpose so that it causes a supply issue with other people. So always go into the practice offline server, never into the live server if you're going to practice something. With that having been said, let's grab our JU-88 and let's take off and land. So be aware that there is a separate video clip tutorial on the instruments for this vehicle. This explains what the different instruments are and, in some cases, how to operate them. Typically in game, when you spawn in, you're going to be spawning into a hangar. You have to taxi out, go to the far end of the runway, and select an opposite direction to take off in that doesn't have a bunch of trees in your way. In practice offline mode, you spawn into a very large runway, big area. So through the magic of video, I'm going to fly over to one of the airfields here in the practice area and take off out of a hangar so you can see what that's like. Now, the other thing you can do is rather than go to practice offline, which is in your within your own PC, is go to an actually supplied training server. And this is a server that's blank. I mean, there's there's no battles going on or anything. But you can go in and treat it as if it is a real uh, server. Uh, supplies and all that kind of stuff. But anything and everything is available to you. And whether you practice offline or in the training server, it doesn't make any difference of rank or subscription or any of that kind of stuff. But you can go into the training server and invite other people and interact with them and train that way. It's you, you, you work with one another. So that's one possibility. Or like in this case, I'm actually setting up my own mission and let me show you how to do that and uh, practice. I enter the training server, hover my cursor over whatever town I would like to try and spawn in from, see what garrison are available. I'm going to then go and right click on that town or the city, that name of that town. And you can see the brigades, then the box will pop up, select garrison that I want, which in this case is the, the Air Force garrison. Left click on the garrison. Then I'm gonna go over here, click on the airfield, air, the airplane icon, which is where I'm gonna be spawning from. And then I will select the box, both two boxes, one for origin and one for target. And I selected the, the same town because I'm not going to any enemy towns at this time. Since anyone could come into the training server, I also type into the information box here that I'm working on a tutorial. Therefore, it'd be less likely for them to interfere with what I'm doing. They're perfectly welcome to come in and use my mission, but I just want to let them know what I'm doing. Once I'm satisfied with what I have done, then I go down at the bottom and click to create mission. And then I go and select the unit that I want to use, in this case, the JU-88. On the right, I select which loadout I want to use, and then I spawn the plane into the area. As you can see, I spawn into the hangar, and I can look around using my track IR, or if you want to look around without having a track IR, you can use your number pad, and in the different numbers correspond to different directions of looking. I'm going to press E to start my engine, and give it the tiniest bit of throttle take that plane out of the hangar. I also check the map to see which direction the airfield runs, which is northeast to southwest. And I know that the southwest end of the airfield has less trees, so that's the direction I want to take off from. So I'm going to go to the northeast end of the airfield by hitting my forward slash key to unlock the tail wheel using Z. And then I'm going to relock the tail wheel by hitting the forward slash key again and releasing the brake. Throttle up just a little bit more, get 
get down to this end of the airfield where I want to turn around and aim to go back the other direction. Because the audio of the clip is so loud, I have adjusted it so down so that you can hear my voice above the in engine sound. So when I get to an approximate spot of where I want to start my rollout, I will unlock the tail wheel, pull back on the throttle, and then I hit the brake on the opposite side for X to turn to the right, lock the tail wheel again, and get myself lined up, and then prepare to take off. Once I'm lined up with the gap in the trees at the far end of the airfield, I use X and Z, both locking both brakes and making sure the tail wheel is locked as well. I then put the flaps on full, which is the delete key. You have insert and delete. Insert operates the, the flaps up and then delete puts the flaps down. I'm going to give it full throttle and then I'm going to hit apostrophe key two times to get it up to max RPMs. Then I'm going to hit F8 to get the manifold pressure up to 1.4 manifold pressure. And then I'm going to try and keep the plane pulling gently back on the yoke just a little bit to keep that tail down for a second. And then once the tail lifts, it'll lift on its own. My, the speed will get up to about 140 kilometers per hour. The plane will start to lift on its own while I've got that little bit of back pressure. I want to make sure I climb very gently because I'm lugging several thousand pounds of bombs with this plane and I don't want to stall it. So once I get up in the air, I push G to raise the landing gear and then I also raise the flaps, which would be my insert key. I'm going to try and keep the plane relatively level as long as I'm above the trees and that way I can get the speed up. The faster the plane goes, the more lift it will generate and the less I have to trim up. Or if I also, if I want, I can trim the the plane using the I and K, trim the nose up. I'm going to hit K, I to trim it down. And I can trim it up really high so that the plane's almost basically hands-free will climb on its own or stay above those those treetops. Once again, once I get the plane relatively, you know, up to a little bit of speed, I'm going to level it off. Uh, bring that trim back down because the more you trim it, the more drag there is and I don't want drag, so I want to get the plane fast. So as I bring the trim down by pressing the I key, I then uh, will also you know, watch that airspeed increase. Once I get above 300 kilometers per hour, the, the, I can pretty much trim the plane down to zero and it will still uh, increase its speed and because of the less drag and it will start to climb again on its own without having to, to trim it up at all. So right here, I'm trying to engage the autopilot, which is typically your left control A. And um, however, um, I've re-key mapped it to just the letter A so I can you know, engage the autopilot easily. Uh, once you get the autopilot engaged, then the speed's going to still increase because you have that less drag in your hands off. But I'm, So what I'll do is I will hit the autopilot off, on, off, on, off, on very rapidly so that um, I, I can keep that autopilot engaged and get the plane up, up to speed without you know, any inputs into the uh, flight controls. The reason why I do that is because as the plane increases its speed when you're on the autopilot, um, until it reaches its equilibrium. Uh, if for every so many kilometers per hour, uh, that will kick the autopilot off. And if you're not paying attention, then the plane will, you know, maybe lose altitude or whatever. This one, if you're up to speed, you don't have to worry about that. It'll, it'll climb when the autopilot goes off. Okay, once I've decided, okay, I've got far enough, so let's turn around and head back towards the airfield. You have to be careful about turning too sharp because the sharper you turn, the more you're going to lose in both your altitude uh, and the drag from the, the sharp turn will also slow your plane down. Once we get headed back towards the airfield, we get ourselves set up for the landing. Now I, I have the chat box back up. You can see I've deployed my dive brake because I got to slow this plane down. It uh, likes to go fast so and it's very heavy so it takes a while to slow down. Once my speed is down and I pull back on the throttle, once my speed is under 300 kilometers per hour, I can hit the um, G for lowering the landing gear. I'm going to maintain that uh, dive brake being out 
and uh, I'm going to try and keep the speed at right around between 150 or 200. The uh, main thing is uh, just a little bit of pressure from the... Um, I'm going to continue, let the plane just basically come in between 150 and 200 and just let the plane land, I pull back on the throttle, flare ever so slightly, touch down hopefully gently because this plane will really bounce including flipping over completely. Then I'll tap the X and Z keys for the brakes to slow the plane down and then I can hit E to turn off the engine and we've completed our flight. Thank you for watching World War II Online Tutorials on flying, taking off and landing the JU-88.